Hello, I'm Julia Garrett from Forestry Commission Scotland. I'm the Water Policy Advisor based in Sylvan House in Edinburgh. Hello, I'm John Gorman and I work for the Scottish Environment Protection Agency as an Environmental Protection Officer based in Dumfries and Galloway. We've made for you this short training video on best water management in forests. What we really want you to pay attention to is the water guidelines, part of the UK forestry standard. It's very important for all the operators involved in forestry work to comply fully with the forest and water guidelines and also CEPA's environmental legislation which is contained within the document. We're going to start with a video on best practice in cultivation. We hope you enjoy it. Blountfield Farm uh, is the site we're standing on here today, uh, a former agricultural site. So we were brought in as a contractor to establish woodland um, over a five year period on behalf of the Forage Commission. From a drainage perspective, the first thing we, when we come on any site like this, we're kind of looking at the former land use and taking a good walk over the site. So we're thinking what's been here before, what kind of drainage systems might have been imposed in the past. What's the topography like? What soils are we dealing with? Underlying geology, etc. So there's a whole suite of things. Well, in terms of this site, it's um, in a, an area of fairly high rainfall. It's ex-agricultural land, so there's a lot of field drains potentially on this site. Um, and we've got to think about the water right from the word go when we start to plan the work we're going to be doing here. Um, so what we've done and what we're trying to do with the contractors is ask them to engage with SEPA from an early stage. So SEPA are involved in some of the decisions we make, giving us information and, and guiding us with our decisions that we make. This site's a little bit different to most we deal with in that there wasn't many areas where there was standing water that we needed to get rid of. This site, one of the biggest water issues was groundwater runoff. The field we're standing in now, the base rock's really quite close to the surface. So when You've got a heavy period of rainfall, instead of infiltrating through the, the, the soil layers, it tends just to run across the top of the field. And of course, if you've ploughed that field, there's a chance that you're going to carry all that silt that you've uh, created through the ploughing down into watercourses or where it shouldn't be. So what we've got a contractor to do here um, is every 30 to 50 metres lift his plough. So the reason for this is that when you create the plough furrow, you sometimes get some water running down it. By stopping it and lifting the plough, you just create a stop for that water. So what we've got here, to my right hand side, the agricultural ploughing, and to the left here, excavator mounding. So part of the reason that we're mounding to my left is there's a stream just above, and uh, in terms of uh, soil disturbance, and a little bit less intrusive ground preparation methodology, uh, excavator mounding is what was chosen here. So what we're looking at here is a drain taking water from within the forestry coop behind me, down to the roadside drain here. The drain itself was marked out using uh, bamboo, canes and tape and a clinometer to make sure it didn't exceed two degrees. And you can also see that there's a bit of a disconnect between where we finished the ploughing and the actual drain itself. Um, and that's just to make sure that there's no sediment coming from uh, that the drain lines into the drain directly. So what we've got here is a silt trap and that services a forest drain just from the other side of the road there. Quite an extensive buffer zone that gives it to the water time to clear before it eventually reaches the stream. Well for any landowner that's considering doing a, a woodland creation project, they have to understand their site firstly and what their objectives are. Um, they also have to understand the legislation, the frameworks that are in place, like the Water Framework Directive. Um, that imposes certain obligations upon the landowner to make sure that they get any works done on their land to the right standard and effects like the duty of care um, to the environment and to people that come onto their land. So they've got to make sure that those are in place. A key Scottish Government policy is to support sustainable forestry in Scotland and, and what we do is really try and make sure that uh, it's done a sustainable way through the legislation and the associated guidelines that go with that. You know, the main responsibility of an owner is to engage somebody that's competent to carry the works out and to make sure that person is aware of any intrinsic hazards within the site that they should be aware of in the operations that they carry out and how they go about them. And then to monitor that the person that they've engaged, at least to some degree, is actually carrying that out. And obviously if they engage somebody that's competent, it's reasonable to assume that that person will do an element of monitoring themselves, but the landowner should still accept some reliability for that and understand that ultimately 
they will bear the responsibility if the site's in inappropriately done. Drains, etc., as I said, are an easy thing in, uh, in theory when you're sitting in the office thinking about it, but when you come out in sight and you've got fencing in the go and you've got various other operations in the go, that's when it comes to, um, you, yeah, the, the planning comes to its own because if you've done that beforehand, you can manage each operation separately and not start tripping over yourself. This is Ladyard Forest um, at the north, north end of the Dumfries and Border East Forest District. Uh, we've been working along with SEPA on a recent upgrade we've done. Diffuse pollution uh, procedures are being put into place, extra culverts, extra cut-off drains and all that sort of thing, which were never done in the days when the roads were built because forest water guidelines never existed. One of the first things you do when you, when you, when you find out about the operation going ahead is you come out to site, you carry out a survey, collate as much information about the site as possible. The road is approximately five kilometres in length, where at the moment we've done two kilometres, um, and later on in the next year and two, we'll be carrying on to do more of that. We worked in partnership with SEPA during this operation, and we had them out in site um, to ensure that they were satisfied with the works we were actually carrying out. Well, roadside drains can provide high-risk pathways for pollution to leave the working area behind us and enter receiving water courses. Therefore, it's absolutely vital at the pre-planning stage that Bruce and his colleagues disconnect these roadside ditches and lead the, the drainage water onto natural vegetated areas so that we can get natural entrapment of sediments and also natural treatment of any organic matter to avoid diffuse pollution. We picked up this water course that was running which wasn't on the Ordnance Survey map. Mm -hmm. The one further down is on the Ordnance Survey map, but this one wasn't. I just felt that we needed to include this in the diffuse pollution uh, scenario as well. So we've put in a pipe underneath the road, mm -hmm. which feeds it into its natural drain, and we've mm -hmm. fed a pipe over the top of this one to catch the dirty ditch water and anything that. This site is a good example of where the forestry civil engineering team have identified a high risk drainage site where the roadside drainage system was directly connected into a water course previously. However, here they have disconnected that system by putting in sumps and a pipe underneath the forest roads and it's now led into a final sump for settlement of sediment particles and after that sump the, uh, the drainage water cascades over onto natural vegetated areas for further treatment. This is an example of good practice and it's something that SEPA would recommend at every forest site. Well we're on a, um, what was a farm site called Brown Moor. Um, it's just located um, a couple of miles south of Selkirk in the Scottish borders. The uh, farmer wanted to diversify the farm a bit um, because, um, you know, getting older and um, finding it harder to manage part, you know, some parts of the farm, so I looked into the possibility of um, planting this with trees. All the water in the site, there's the, essentially like three small uh, watercourses on this side of the property, um, and they all feed into this um, pond, which I think is an, an, a man-made pond back in the sort of probably medieval times. My first um, assessment on the site was a walk across the site, really just to get an idea of what was here, um, what sort of soils and what, what we were looking at in terms of watercourses and things. So. Well, it, the idea of the machine is that it um, scrapes enough of soil up to make a mound so that the tree can stand roughly about 20 centimetres or 10, 15, 20 centimetres above the ground to give it the perfect position for warmth so that it increases the, the growing season for the tree slightly. Ploughing tends to have water issues so the, the, the purpose of the mounding is to get a good root, root structure and allow for long-term stability in the crop. Uh, it also minimises the disturbance of soil um, and any carbon release. So we come out regularly to check the work, having a look at the quality of what they're doing, but also having a look at the water courses and just anything that's relevant uh, to make sure everything's working okay. So that's mainly how we do it. Uh, it's, re it's really, it's a two-way process really. I mean, there's a lot of discussion, so we're basically trying to provide advice, um, just making sure they haven't missed anything significant. Um, yeah, well, I mean, one of the big issues here, obviously, is ground preparation. So we were really pleased to see the, the, the sort of um, choice of ground prep here with this with this continuous mounder, which we think is a really useful piece of kit. Get onto the site, understand your site, 
understand the various aspects of it, the drillage of it, the, uh, the, the ground formation, and most importantly, the soil. Understand the soils, and that takes you forward into your, your cultivation to get the best, the best technique possible. And also consider the drainage and plan it out well in advance and make sure you put into place adequate buffers for water courses. We hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. The key messages we want you to take away for best cultivation is for site assessment and planning and good drainage. Good site cultivation and drainage management are important issues for SEPA in terms of reducing the risks of diffuse pollution to the environment. We hope that the sites you have just seen would be deemed to be good examples of what we would constitute to be good management practice. Any questions, please contact your local Conservancy office or your local SEPA office. They'd be happy to help.